What's going on, everyone? Joseph Moore Podcast, emergency, urgent episode. Apparently, so <laughs> Dave Portnoy, <laughs> Barstool Sports, went on the Caller Daddy feed. We have no idea what's going on. We just know that there's some drama, some tea to be spilled. And Snowman and I were talking about it, about to listen to the whole half hour episode. We're like, let's get some content out of this. So that's why you see myself and security producer Snowman over there. So we are going to live react. We're going to play the full episode and we're going to react to this whole Caller Daddy fiasco if you don't know what caller daddy is look it up listen to us and just catch along because we really don't know what it is either we know very right many. right we have oh. no idea what this is all we did yeah. was you know see el prez start you know yes. talking some shit on twitter so here we are and here we are reaction. let's yeah. run it. uh here's what we got today this is going to be the explanation in my mind of what is going on or what has happened with call her daddy um, Call Daddy obviously what hasn't been on the air for five weeks or so, maybe maybe going on six. Um, and the goal throughout this entire time that they haven't been coming into work and, and you know doing their job basically was I wanted to let them come back on the airwaves and control the narrative, tell the story the way they wanted to. Um, for those, and we put the, we're putting this obviously on the Call Her Daddy feed, so some people may be like, who the fuck is this guy talking? About? This guy, I'm Dave Portnoy, Sue President Day. Um, I'm the guy who started Barstool Sports. I'm the guy who found Call Her Daddy. I'm basically their boss. You probably heard me in and out of the episodes, but I wasn't that involved in Call Her Daddy. It was their own world. They didn't really come into the office that much. Um, they weren't involved in the day to day activities of Barstool. So, again, my goal was let Alex and Sophia come back on. Uh, call her daddy together and tell the story of what is going on the trail all that stuff that has been leading up to this moment last night or i guess this morning the new york post that seems pretty fair you just don't show up to work you still get a chance to come on and explain yourself right no shit <laughs> that's what so yeah before we uh started this the the little producer research i did yeah. seems like they make five hundred thousand dollars a year to record one show a week for like an hour and a half which means they bring in a ton of money they don't get paid 500 grand right. for nothing. they get paid that much because that's what they're worth which is insane. exactly that's absolutely insane so yeah it sounds like you know they're not coming into work because of whatever we don't know what yet we're gonna find and out we're yeah we're trying to find out an article that was posted about them basically saying that they do not they don't get along anymore and they've been arguing with each other um and it's kind of a he said she said people choosing sides saying alex is wrong sophia is wrong barstool is wrong whatever it may be so i'm here to give my unbiased take now i don't even be like i'm biased here barstool you and barstool how is it unbiased i'm going to give my unbiased take on what happened you can believe it you cannot believe it you can do whatever you want really i will say this i've been doing it for 17 years barstool you know i've never had anybody say i'm a liar or dishonest or don't tell the truth some people may not like me. They'd be like, hey, that guy's an asshole. He's a douchebag. But nobody's ever said I'm a liar. In fact, I'm probably honest to a fault. So take it or leave it, what I'm going to say right now and how this went down. Try to tell the whole story. Don't know how long it'll take. Maybe 20 minutes. Maybe less. Who knows? But here it is. Here is the call her daddy story the way I see it. So I'm going to start at the beginning. The first time I saw call her daddy was on Alex's Instagram feed. I saw a little teaser, like a two minute clip, 20 second clip. I don't remember what it was. And I knew Alex because I knew she had dated Syndergaard and I followed her. I'm like, oh, this is pretty interesting. What is this? I've never seen anything like this before. So I reached out to Alex to find out what she was doing with the podcast. That set off probably a chain of six to eight meetings with just Alex. We didn't even really know who Sophia was. Talking about Call Her Daddy, what her plans were. Um, she actually told me she did all the editing herself, which impressed me. It's like, okay, this is not just some blonde uh, bimbo. This is somebody who's very smart uh, and I think could have a chance to do something big. So we finally reached a deal with Alex and that's when we found out, well, Sophia came with it. Um, it's a duo and we came to an agreement for both of them to sign mm -hmm. contracts. Now mm -hmm. this point, right here what i'm about to say feels very important there was back and forth at the time of signing them on the intellectual property of call her daddy uh they did have a lawyer and they and alex didn't want to give over the name in the beginning in barstool we said well 
we're not going to do this deal if you don't give us ownership of Caller Daddy because it makes no sense. We don't want to blow you guys up and then just have you walk out the door and you own Caller Daddy and we're left holding our dicks. We didn't want that to be the situation. Um, and we came to agreement. It made no sense. It was either take it or leave it. We weren't going to do this. And that's exactly what happened. Like, yeah, it, it absolutely blew up and like, oh, yeah. We're old fans. Yeah. If we didn't get the IP. So we got the IP. That was a crucial part of the very beginning of this deal. And what I told Alex when we did this, best three-year deal. That's what we had, a three-year contract. I think it was like 70 grand, somewhere around that neighborhood to start. And they had all these bonuses for downloads. And what I told Alex and what I tell every single person that I sign here on the content side is, you know what? At the end of the three years or however long your contract is, best case scenario, when you walk out the door, you're a huge star. and You can renegotiate with us for a lot more money or your value is so great you can go somewhere else. That's the dream scenario. Well, let's get underway. So Call Her Daddy launches, instant success, smash hit, huge, huge podcast, Bigger than my wildest dreams, I think bigger than what they thought it would be right off the bat. Um, so the thing just explodes out of the gate. It's pretty much all hunky-dory. Everybody's happy. We're promoting the hell out of it. They seem happy. They're sort of interacting with Barstool. Things are going well. Um, and as the podcast continues to grow, at some point, and there are little points of contention here. They're making the same amount of money, I believe, in the beginning. Probably after, I don't know, six months Alex came into my office by herself and asked for a raise. And we gave it to her. By the way, we had given Sophia a raise as well. But Alex was making more money than Sophia in the beginning. And to be honest, I thought rightfully so. Like, Alex is who... I think that makes sense. The few episodes I've listened to, it's ob it's like it's Alex and Sophia, but Alex is yeah. obviously the star. Like, right. you know, they're co-hosts, but it's a, like... And it's not even a 1A, 1B situation. I think it's a 1-2. And it's a great yeah. one punch, but Alex is obviously the blonde one. Absolutely. She's, she's the star. So we're, we're, we're making sense here so far. Yep, yep. Do all the time. Alex is who uh, I found for the contract. To me, Alex was the one who's doing all the editing. Sophia was just sort of along for the ride in the beginning. That's how I viewed it. So it's justified Alex making more money. Um, <laughs> and we're still fairly early into this three-year deal continue along and a year is up basically a year they, they've done a year's worth of work the thing is huge and i can tell now that you know they want more money now this is the first part that starts to get a little bit iffy we're starting to have contract negotiations with these girls for year two because we get it they've made a shit ton of money um and the podcast is gigantic and you can ask any of the 200 people who work here, the content. If you have success, we're more than happy to renegotiate. There's nothing we like doing more than paying people more money because they're doing well. So we start the negotiations, right. and this Alex and Sophia are in my office. And we have a conversation. I think I ended it. If you guys are unhappy with anything, just tell me. Like, I'm the most blunt, straightforward person. Just tell me if you're not happy. I'll try to fix it. We have a conversation. I thought it went well. They walk out the door, and I get basically uh, an email from Alex and Sophia, which clearly was not written by Alex and Sophia. It was written from a lawyer that basically said, in lawyer speak, hey, we want to sit down and redo this deal. Uh, and more than that, it said, we don't feel we're represented properly when we signed with you guys and never would have given you the IP. That set me off right there because I knew that was just – a flat out lie like it couldn't have been more crystal clear why we wanted the ip and the deal never would have happened without it anyways we get that email and i wrote back to the lawyer put your hard hat on buddy like get ready for the lawyer sucks he's the money whatever he's the worst lawyer but that started to change so we meet with the lawyer um and it's ridiculous it was actually a what he specializes in bird law it's like uh, <laughs> yeah so, yep. yeah i mean why would barstool like do the deal without owning Caller Daddy because then they make they would exactly. make no money. Like right, no, and if they didn't want to do that, they didn't have to. But Barstool allowed them to jet stream to where they are, and like he said, way beyond anyone's wildest dreams. Like the right, podcast. well, being put on the bar the Barstool network, right? You know, like all like you know PMT, you know, Rub and Race, and all that shit. Like that's what skyrocketed them to right. where they are. Who knows where the hell they'd been 
you know, I'm sure it would have been a fairly successful podcast, but, you know, bringing in that, you know, college audience, you know, me and you, like, to, you know, know what this stuff. I would have never heard or seen of it, even exactly. if it's super huge, without it being on the Barstool Sports Network. That's – Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. No. Totally agree. This is Let's call Eric and myself and the lawyer. <laughs> and he presented oh, – One more thing. Yeah. There are a few people in this world that I want no fucking part of in, you know, legal disagreements. <laughs> Dave fucking Portnoy <laughs> is number one on that list where I would not want to piss him off. Nope. List of demands for us. And I also want to say something before I do this. At the end of year one, Alex made $506,000. Sophia made $461,000. So they weren't getting fucking dirt money. It was written in their contracts that they were getting paid bonuses on their downloads. Their downloads were fucking huge. So they went from unknown talent that we took a risk on to each making close to half a million dollars a year. Pretty fucking good first year. And I sat and watched them both leak that they were wildly underpaid. This is while we were trying to start a year two negotiation to pay them more money on top of that. Anyways, here's the list of demands that their lawyer asked for. A $1 million guarantee for each of them. They no longer want to be qualified as Barstool Sports employees. They want to be freelancers. They want 50% of everything we did. So if they sold a sweatshirt, they got 50%. If we sold an ad, they got 50%. They wanted to be able to sell their own merch, do their own ads. And they wanted us to give them back, call her dad. What did we get in return? Nothing. Nothing. At that point, I cut off negotiations. I was like, this is fucking crazy. They want all this shit, and what do we get? Just to kiss their feet, and they'll come back into the office? It was insanity. And that's when they started the trail. And the trail is exactly what everybody thought it was. They were shopping, call her daddy around, looking to go somewhere else, break their contract with us. Now, our stance, my stance, Barstool's stance was, if you guys take call her daddy and go somewhere else, we're going to sue the fuck out of you. Like, you're under a three-year contract. What makes you think you can just get up and leave? Like, what company would sign somebody if the second they get big, you're just going to walk out the door? The analogy that I always right. used with them was like an athlete analogy. If you sign a three-year contract with the Boston Red Sox, and at the all-star break of year one, you're doing really well, you can't just pick up and go to the New York Yankees because they're going to pay you more. you got to wait till the contract's done. We cut off negotiations – Story of the Cleveland Indians right the there. The Call Her Daddy girls after they made those demands with the lawyer. And then I sat and I thought about it. It's like, these girls are going to walk, whatever. Let's see what we can do. So I offered this trade. Hey, we'll give you back Call Her Daddy. And we'll give you new contracts. But we have the rights to alcohol. So when you leave the alcohol, Call Her Daddy is still owned by Barcel. You guys get, I think we said 10% originally of anything we do. And Barcel gets the rest. All the merch, all the IP, all the fee, everything goes to you. It literally, as I tried to explain to them just for that, millions of dollars waiting for them if they just fulfilled their contract. Um, nothing. Didn't hear anything back from the lawyer. They went to it. They're like, we want 90% of the alcohol. It's like, well, what, what the fuck are we getting out of this? Nothing. I actually <laughs> sent Alex a text after we had that conference call with the lawyer the first time. That in my 17 years of doing this, I had never dealt with anybody as unprofessional and disloyal and greedy as those two. I'm paraphrasing. That was essentially it. Huh. I didn't talk to the Call Her Daddy girls, who prior to that, I thought I had a good relationship with, I don't know, for four or five months. And as everybody knows, they just stopped coming into the office. They just stopped doing their podcast. And then they had the gall to be like, oh, we're not legally uh, allowed to talk about it. You can talk about whatever the fuck you want. People who know me know I love controversy. I love talking about it. I was still trying to get them back here. And by the way, the timing of all this with Corona and all that shit was very good. Because if you don't know me, I fucking have sold Barstool Sports twice. I'm worth $100 million, at least till the stock market crashed. I don't fucking need their money. But I'd love 
to have revenue streams to help pay the bills here during this time. So it worked out in an advantageous manner because if this is just me, I would have told them to fucking kick rocks and go fuck themselves a long time ago. Like, I don't need this fucking headache and this ungrateful bullshit in my life. But times are different. So, again, we go. They haven't put up an episode for a month, whatever it may be. Alex reaches out to me and says, hey, Dave, can Sophia and I come meet with you at your apartment? And I'm like, sure. This is Corona. This is maybe three weeks ago. So they come up on my roof deck. And we talk. And, and again, I looked them straight in the eyes. It's like, listen. You guys, I've asked you a hundred times, are you shopping? Call her daddy. Why does everyone say that you're talking to other people? They just look me right in the eyes, go, oh, no, we're not. That's not true. We're, we're happy to be here. We love being here. Just that's what they had said forever. Straight lies. What is all the uh, stuff about you guys in the trail and being held hostage? What does that mean? Oh, you know how it goes, Dave. We're just joking. That's what they always said. Well, for the first time, they basically came clean. It's like, yeah, we're, we're thinking about leaving. And I'm like, you know, we're going to sue you if you leave. And I remember Sophia's like, sue us for what? We'll, we'll call her daddy's ours. Blatant lie. They know it's not ours. They absolutely know it's not ours. But they were looking to get out of the contract. We're sitting down negotiating. It's the middle of Corona. And I cut them a deal that was so outrageously good in their favor that I thought we'd get something done. It was half a million dollar guarantee for each of them. An increase of merch. I think they were getting seven and a half percent something like that there were bonuses involved and here's the kicker well there's two parts they had tw they had i think 18 months left on their contract i said i cut six months off of it so they could leave in one year and i would give them call her daddy i would give them the ip oh hold on hold on hold on <laughs> before before i mean like why not? I mean, I don't even know what to say. That sounds like the, the contract I mean, of all contracts. These two sound like the most greedy the individuals I've ever, and I liked them. Anything that I've heard from, like, you know, from, I thought they were really cool. Like, you know, I thought they were cool, two cool girls. This is just insane. So you get, so let's go through what he said. 500 yep. as the baseline. So remember, their first contract, their baseline was seven, 70,000. 70, yeah, 70,000. Almost made 500 grand. So, yep. so your baseline's 500 grand. With all the bonuses that they were probably going to hit, you know, yep. that were probably just the same as the first one with their downloads and all that stuff would kick in. I mean, they'd be up like three towards a million. Of, yeah, three quarters of a million yeah. dollars at least. Probably yep. you know, once all the bonuses kick in and then plus the merch increase and everything else. And they get to keep caller daddy and <laughs> the contract gets sliced. What they say, 18 months cut 16 off. So it gets cut in a third and they could right. believe that they have caller daddy. It's like, don't you think it's like, okay, you know, we're going to slave through this, make, you know, three quarters yeah. of dollars live in our high rise apartment, you know, yeah, be able to <laughs> and do whatever and own the podcast and you know by that time they're, they're going to be so big and have enough money to where if they just wanted to do their own thing and have way yep. from the margins and get away from the bars they could still survive away from the bar store well i mean yeah that kind of sounds like you know they're you know what they said slaving let's remember there's one episode a week for like an hour and a half right so you're working an hour and a half a week you know yeah. but i i don't i don't know do you think i he hasn't really said anything, but do they, do they do their own editing? You know, do they do their own stuff? So the, the one and a half hours a week might be they make a enough money to, you know, have a staff. Right. Whether they decide to do it or not. Um, exactly. Not really easy, but, you know, if you've been doing it for a long time and yep. that's all you have to do and you're going to get paid, you know, a half a million dollars to do it, I think you could probably figure it out. I think I would figure it out. I, think I could fit it into my schedule, but right. like, um, yeah, no, no, this, this seems – it seems like the, the, the deals of all deals. And I can't believe Portnoy is like giving them all these chances because. Yeah. Well, just, just like he said, you know, he wants, you know, circumstance with the Corona. He wants, right. you know, it'd be good to have the revenue coming in because, you know, at like, like these things are like this, right? There, there's usually, you know, three or four top things, whether it's like an agency, you know, their clients, or it's like, you know, your podcast and your, your content people. Like they yep. make money for all the company along with the big sponsored event stuff. 
So they right. explore the more developmental like shows and podcasts that aren't revenue generating stuff yet. It's just like when we were talking about sports, right? Like the yep. football program, you know, it can make a ton of money at the D1 level. So it keeps the other sports that aren't revenue generators afloat. And so right. because of circumstance and probably because like he said, he doesn't need them, but circumstance and he just doesn't want the headache. He gave him the deal of all deals. And like he said, going into it, he goes, I'm going to tell them this. This is basically an offer they can't refuse. And thank God, I'm going to be able to keep paying the bills, keep other things afloat, and this headache's going to be gone. But of yep. course, no. Like, this, that's ridiculous. So greedy. So greedy. Let's keep it going. This is easy. This is about three weeks ago. They came up to my roof deck. I think they came up. I don't think I came up. They thought this was a courtesy meeting to make themselves, you know, legally. Like, we tried to make it work. They, were getting, they already had a deal, I found out after the fact. But when I made this offer, half a million dollar guarantee to each of them, they get an increase in merch, and, at the end, and I knock six months off their deal, and we just give them the IP. We were getting fucked in the ass, Barstool was. I just wanted to get money for the next year and the revenue stream going. I just wanted to get this fucking thing going so we could pay the bills when we're shut down and we have this payroll. That's literally, without that, this deal probably never gets offered. I thought they'd sign it there. I honestly, that's how good of a deal. I looked, I'm like, what are you guys, nuts? Like, I don't trust either of you, but I'm telling you, this deal is so good, you, there's no, you can't not take it. But they didn't take it right on the spot. And guess what? They basically went dark. We still got the alcohol. I should clarify that. We still got like 80% of alcohol. But it doesn't matter. They got everything else. We do millions in merch. It would be theirs. They'd own the IP. They'd own the blog. They'd own everything. It was a no-brainer deal. Like if we offered that deal, I tried to explain it to our PMT guys, a huge podcast, damn, Big Cat. He didn't even understand what I was saying. It's like, what do you mean they get the IP? We didn't get the IP. Nobody gets the IP. Well, after that meeting, a day goes by, two days go by, three days go by. We can't fucking get a hold of them. We can't get a hold of their lawyer who's doing it. He won't return our phone calls. And Erica, our CNO, CEO, CEO, and I are like, what is going on? Are they not going to take this deal? And that's when the controversy basically starts to unfold. I can't remember if Alex texted me or called me. But she's like, can I talk to you alone? I'm like, sure. Again, it's like, oh, boy, well, what do we got here? <laughs> and I talked to Alex, and she basically says, we're never going to get a deal done. Sophia refuses to get a deal done. Like, I get it. This deal that you just put in front of us is a no-brainer. I've been begging her to do it. We can't get the deal done. She's going to – and I'm telling you, Dave, she's going to move the goalposts. Every time you concede and give us more, they're going to want more. And guess what? That's what her lawyers were doing. And – I was starting to hear whispers and Alex confirmed it. And this is a big part of the story. Sophia's new boyfriend, which I guess call her daddy. People call suit. I call him fucking a bad guy from a James Bond movie who thinks he's way smarter than he is. Um, uh, Peter Nelson. Is that his name? HBO exec probably greenlit a hit piece on me not too long ago. But he had come into the mix. He was the one who brought in all these lawyers. The lawyer was his friend. He, I believe, this is what I believe. And he was openly shopping, call her daddy. He was acting almost as a manager. And he got a deal with Wondry. They were going to call the podcast The Fathers. And as Sophia would always say to me, we're prepared for a lawsuit. Wondry, scumbags, they knew we were going to sue him. I don't know what they're going to defend themselves for. It's come to my attention that a certain scumbag agent who I've never trusted actually took one of our guys contracts and showed it to Peter Nelson. And they went line by line trying to figure out how can we get out of this? I've heard they had conspiracy theories to say that we had gender discrimination. Every trick in the book they were getting ready to use against us to get out of the contract and go to Wondry. And Alex, credit to her in my mind, if you want to say that, was like, this deal that Barstool just gave us is so good. How can we pass it down? We have to go to Barstool now. We're getting the IP. There'll be no lawsuit. There'll be no fight. We can leave in 12 months. What's the rush? Well, the rush is, from the way I understand it, 
Peter Nelson had to put his neck out. He had, he had represented saying, Hey, I control call her daddy. And when Alex bails, guess what? You don't control call her daddy anymore. The second. So wow. we basically just talked shit for the last 20 minutes about these two girls. What it really, it's fucking suit guy. Well, no, it's Sophia. So Sophia has Sophia and her oh, fucking her dirtbag her. boyfriend. She has a bad influence talking into her head yeah. right now. She only sees it that way. That's all she says. So it sounds like she told it sounds like she told Suitman that we own the IP address and he's going around Hollywood saying, Yeah, we own this. Like we're here, let's go, let's get out of this contract and boom. When you know, that's obviously not true. And uh, now Portnoy is going to shred this Peter Nelson guy into oblivion. Right. And Alex is obviously, we now know. Right. And she is self-aware enough to understand what, how good of a deal it is. And this is not a, her problem. This is right. a and her boyfriend, HBO exec guy, Hollywood problem. God, I'd love to see Larry David go with this guy. Oh, brother. Alex told me. I want to do a deal with Barstool. I don't think I can get it done with Sophia. I called Sophia and told her that. And I told Alex that I was going to do that. I said, listen, Sophia, Alex doesn't think we can get a deal done with you involved. I'm telling you right now, she's moving to do a deal with us. If you want to be at Barstool, you should move to get a deal with us. I didn't hear anything from two to three days from Sophia. Goose eggs, nothing. And we start hatching a deal with Alex. And it wasn't more money than what Sophia was getting. It wasn't. The original contract that we put in front of them from my roof deck was 50-50, equal, equal. And I could tell Alex was into it. Now, what changed was when she came back to me, it's like, I can't get Sophia to do this. I want to do it myself. We were already giving them 100% of the IP at the end if they were together. When it was just Alex, she, she got 75%. Barstool kept 25%. And we said to her, if Sophia will come back, what do we fucking care? We were giving it all away. We're just trying to get this thing back on the air. Alex, though, then at that point, was like getting 75%. And in her mind, I think she's like, you know what? I deserve 75% anyways. In her mind, she believes I do all the editing. I do all the work. I do most of it. I should be getting 75 no matter what. She was willing to do the 50-50. It was there. Nobody moved on it. And then once we got ready to do a deal with Alex, and I believe the Wondry deal clearly fell through because there was no longer Call Her Daddy, I think Sophia wanted to come back maybe. It was too late. It was too late. The 50-50 deal, Alex didn't want to do it anymore. She's like, I do more of the work. We did offer Sophia her own podcast on the network. We'd pay her half a million dollars. Start your own brand, Sophia. We'll produce the hell out of it. We'll support the hell out of it. We'll do whatever you want. You guys can tell your own stories. And when you leave, Sophia, you can keep 100% of what you're doing. If you think you're the talent, Sophia, this thing will build up. We'll put your podcast on the Call Her Daddy feed. So all the listeners will get to hear your story and follow you. And you tell them where to go. One year, we'll honor the contract. Never heard back from Sophia. All we heard was lawyers from then on in. Her team, don't be confused. Neither. To Alex is the only one who still will talk to us direct. Sophia will not. We talked to lawyers. She got new William Morris, she signed. And they basically just started threatening that they were going to sue us, sue Barstool. Like if you empowered Alex. We didn't empower shit. We didn't empower shit. Our goal was to get Call Her Daddy back on the air. Alice came to us and laid out a scenario. And by the way, the scenario is not just like blindly believing Alex. And it is a he said, she said. So theoretically, Alex could be lying right now. And Sophia could be telling the truth. And she's like, wait a minute. No, I'm the one who wanted to get this deal done. But I don't know. Because who's leaking these articles in the New York Post? Somebody who's savvy in the ways of media. Somebody who's like worked at HBO. <laughs> and why is he mentioning that article and what does he have to do with anything? Why am I hearing stories with such specific names that can't be made up? Like an agent X talking to Peter Nelson about a contract. How do you know agent X's name unless it's true? So I tend to believe Alex and I know Peter Nelson fucking hates us. Eric has had uh, lunch with him. He hates us. Go look at his Forbes under 40. Dude's a dork. He seems like somebody would hate us. 
Alex confirmed that he fucking hates us. Alex says she has proof that he hates us. He was trying to manipulate the situation. It, to me, Sophia mixed business and pleasure. And again, I don't really like they both were going to stab us in the back. Alex and Sophia were conspiring to fuck Barstool over. And when I say <laughs> fuck over, you can argue about salaries. They both made decent money. But, you know, you signed a three year contract, you should honor it. You shouldn't lie to my face every time we ask, are you shopping this? Because we keep hearing rumors. Lies, lies, lies. They were getting ready to concoct a totally bullshit story to get out of this and go on their own. It all seems to start percolating when this Peter Nelson, the suit, gets in the picture. Suit. Fucking That's suit, Billy opinion. Wolf. So they're getting ready to fuck us over. We have this meeting on my roof deck. I make a deal that they didn't expect ever to get offered. Alex says, wait a minute. We have to stay with Barstool. This is the best option now. Sophia says, no, because my boyfriend has stuck his neck out and got us a deal at Wondry, and he's going to look like an asshole if we pull out, and they get in a fight about that. And now it's a he said, she said from there. But I'm telling you this, the deal we offered was 50-50 down the middle, and they didn't take it until Alex came back and said, I want that deal. And Sophia is still coming back now with different changes. Like if she came back, we can't, it, we can't talk about her and stuff like things. Like I remember I had a conversation with her lawyers and I'm like, I'm just going to say what happened. I'm going to tell the truth and we'll let the people decide. It's like, Oh, you can't, you can't, you know, you can't talk about her. There's indemnification. I'm bad at words. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not going to bad mouth her. I'm not going to dis dis uh, disparage her. I'm just going to say the fucking truth. I don't think the truth is disparaging. And this is the truth as I understand it. I'm sure they're going to, like, her camp will be like, no, it was Alex, like, backstabbing and this and that. There's a couple points here which she's right about. Alex made more money. Alex came into me and asked me for more money a long time ago. She got the raise. Sophia didn't. I thought it was warranted at the time. But the 50-50, they were back on equal feet. The newest contract, which is only after one year, they were 50-50. They're each making half a million. They each got half of the IP. For whatever reason, that contract did not get signed. And they had three, four days of radio silence. Again, till Alex came forward, it's like, I'm telling you, Sophia's not going to do it. It's like, what do you mean? How could she not do it? Because Peter Nelson. And it makes fucking sense. Do I know that for a fact? No. Does Alex say that's what happened? Yes. Does Sophia say that's what's happened? No. But if I'm an impartial person, there's no other explanation how that deal didn't get done. So that's the caller daddy situation. And as we sit, here's just what has gone through my head. Just so does Peter Nelson think Sophia actually likes him or is she just getting with this guy? So now she has the end in Hollywood. He's with HBO and yeah. William Morris, which is just like a powerhouse agency. Right. Like really, well, I mean, she's very attractive and, you know, I feel like we should attach a picture of this guy to to this video, but he, he is a fucking dork. He's a dweeb in every sense of the, he's a dweeb in every sense of the word. Like, he's, right on the head. he's right. Yeah. He's he's like the Lord of the Rings dweeb, no offense, but <laughs> we're getting ready potentially to bring Alex back on to try to do it herself. And and honestly, there's such horror stories that Sophia was asking. Again, I don't have proof, but like, hey, if we sign this and then intentionally get fired, do we get the IP? Like, such dishonest shit. And they're both dishonest up to this point. Yeah. Well, why would, they, why would they get fired when they bring in so much money? Right. Like, Portnoy is a grudge-holding human being, but mm -hmm. he is not an idiot to the point where, you know, he's going to fire you because he's pissed at you when you're bringing in so much money. Well, yeah, I mean, they're like like number one picks right now. They're like a number one pick that fizzled out. They're going to get right. chance after chance. And literally what, they're, they, what they've been offering Sophia after the way that she's treated them and the, and the zero communication continuing to be like, hey, come in, we're going to give you your own show. You're, you can own it. 
you know, we're going to put you on the caller daddy feed. So all those followers, all those ratings, all that, everything, you know, you already have, you're like on freaking third yep. base, rounding, you know, third base right. already. Right. The yeah. fact that they keep coming back and are willing to do this after just the blatant disrespect and the, the, the displays of disloyalty is just insane. Like eventually your, your nine lives are going to run out here, but she just is yeah. obviously blind to that. And like we just said, like, Alex has self-awareness here and good for her, yeah. you know, first off, good for her being like, yeah, whatever, you know, if this is the deal 50, 50, I'm in, even though where she probably, like he said, deserves 75% of it because the amount of work that she does and she's the star. Yeah. Anyways. Um, but the fact that, so first off, good on her for being like, yeah, I want to keep this going. This is a great deal. 50, 50. And then also her being <laughs> like now, like, um, you know, even still wanting to, to do this at all and still communicating, she at least has enough self-awareness. This is just, right. what well, and I mean, I just don't understand what the whole deal, like these girls are like 23, 24 years old. Like you can't stay for another 12 months. And then, and then when you're released or whatever these, this deal is, once you're released, go do whatever you think you're worth, you know, take your, cause obviously like we've heard, they have that, the, the name, you know, the, the IP, you know, yeah. take it and go run with it and do whatever you think you're worth. But whatever. Right now, my gut tells me since the roof deck meeting, Alex has been saying the truth and not Sophia. Because I haven't heard a word of the Peter Nelson stuff. She hasn't mentioned we're going to one tree or any of that. That's all Alex. So that's Alex has openly been like, Yeah, we were trying to fuck you. I haven't heard that from Sophia. That's what makes me think Alex is telling the truth. Will she come back with Caller Day? I don't know. I really don't know. A part of me is like, you know what? No amount of money's worth this. Let's just get rid of them, keep the IP, and start it over ourselves. I think they're both talented. But some level, you got to do business the right way. At least this is like a second chance in my book for Alex. And the Sophia cry poor right now of like, oh, it should be 50-50. Well, we offered it, and you didn't take it. The only time you took it is when it's like, well, Alex is saying she wants it and we're going to do it with her. Are you coming or not? By then it's too late. That ship had sailed. It's a long rambling story. And they're both going to point the finger at each other. I don't have a dog in this fight. I really don't. The one thing that I've said to both lawyers and they both try to get us to point the finger is we don't want to be in the middle of it. Like we don't, we, I didn't talk to these girls for four fucking months for four months. We knew they're planning on leaving and making up excuses to make us look bad. And now you want us to like pick sides. Do you know how much money we've lost by them not doing the, we lose close to a hundred thousand dollars an episode. I haven't even said this. They wanted us to retrograde retroact their new contracts. They want to get paid like for the episodes they didn't do. Do you know how insane that is? And that's where the free the fathers thing came out as we continue to talk. So what's Free the Fathers? That was a deal we did like this. Hey, we want to get paid for the months we haven't worked. Obviously, I'm like, are you fucking out of your mind? We've lost three, $400,000 in advertising. Why the fuck would we back pay you to this raise? And we came to an agreement. My idea, a little shady, I guess, but it's like, let's sell Free the Fathers. You guys keep saying, free the fathers, free the fathers, free the fathers. Let's sell that merch, and then that'll make up, hopefully, for the gap in you guys not working unless losing all the advertising. This is all through Alex. Sophia had nothing to do with it in the sense that I think Sophia never planned on coming back. By the way, we didn't sell a ton of that merch, so it didn't really work that way. So now we're sitting here this way. Like, I think Sophia's getting ready to sue Barstool for what? I don't know. I think she's getting ready to sue Alex for what? I don't know. Alex wants us to defend her lawsuit versus Sophia. We're not doing that. So it's quite the convoluted web. It's quite the convoluted web. You can make your own decisions based on what I said. We're Hopefully not. it wasn't too rambling. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't too long. But that's the truth as I see it. The only things I know for a fact are what they made before, how much we offered them again, and the fact that when we did that new contract, they didn't sign it, and they had plenty of time to sign it. We couldn't even get them on the phone until Alex got the ball rolling by saying, I want to stay at Barstool. You're never going to get a deal with Sophia. And it didn't seem like we were until Alex came and left her no choice. That's my interpretation of it. 
that's a wrap. That's a review. That's, that's the reaction. That's, um, wow. Well, I just would like to say that we are um, available to move into that slot. Yep. I need to change up the advertising a little bit, but we're, we're flexible and we're, uh, we're a lot cheaper. We also don't make as much money. We make I yep. zero, but, uh, but I mean, yeah, man, what the, what the hell? I mean, I just, <laughs> this suit guy, I, I don't like him. Like makes me want to fly to Hollywood and beat his ass or something. I yeah. Come my way. You just stay the night. We'll make the trip in my Jetta hybrid. What's up? Shout out. And like, I mean, but seriously, man, like, um, yeah, and then we have no reason not to believe Portnoy. I mean, as far as we know, right. Portnoy has never lied at all. Um, Ever in his entire life. Yeah, so, I mean, God, yeah, it just, you know, especially Sophia. I'm, you know, I really, don't, I, I really wouldn't say I'm Team Alex, but I'm also, like, obviously much more on her side than Sophia. I'm not on Sophia's side at all. No. Nope. The way that they walked away from that, um, it just – just well, I hit them both because they just simply – like, it's not like they were, you know, neg- trying to renegotiate and stuff. They just stopped, like, stopped doing their thing. Right. Like, they've they, – like, he just said, $100,000 an episode. And what do you say? They haven't been on for a month. And like, that's four or five episodes, you know. It's 500, 500 grand, you know. Yeah. And then, like, they're not even thinking – Yeah. go ahead. And then he references PMT in there, right? So part right. of my team who does three episodes a week who does, you know, a ton of money, you know, they got to be number one at yep. bar school for sure. Yep. I mean, they're, they're huge. They've been, they've been going for years now. And, you know, he's saying, and they're like, wait, what? They're going to get the, they can what get What the fuck is an IP address? Nobody gets that. Yeah. We, we don't even have the IP address and we're like, right. you know, like OG, like bar stool. Yeah. Well, well, that's the point. That's the thing though. Cause they're like OG bar stool guys, you know, right. big cat, you know, coming in like 2012, you know, starting right. in that, in that area. In that time but yeah no that's that's crazy because yeah, that, that just sounds like they're two spoiled 23 year olds 24 year olds who just want more and more and more and more and more and it's like okay well we're gonna give you more money but you just have to not stab us in the freaking back <laughs> like right yeah and yeah the things they were talking about it obviously very i mean when you're young too i mean we're still super impressionable so this guy is obviously yeah. in sophia's ear and in all other right places and stuff like that so like i mean <laughs> whatever i mean uh, this is a caller daddy reaction video so we had to go there a little bit but i mean yeah, yeah that's just it's it's complete and utter nonsense and uh yeah it's really just bullshit you know the disloyalty and disrespect and i, I could never imagine just leaving all that money out there you know obviously the advertisers aren't losing money you know they're, they're just not you know, getting their advertising, they're going to get their money back or their money doesn't go, whatever the deal is. Um, you know, obviously they're not in the hole for anything. So that's not an issue financially, right. but still, you know, there's a lot of, you know, ears and, and eyes that they're not getting in front of that they, you know, count on. And, you know, right. just, it's just everyone involved in Barstool, you know, it's not just them and it's not Portnoy. Obviously he said, exactly. Not, but, you know, like we talked about, you know, literally after we broke it down, we were talking about how the top stuff, and the sponsors and things like that helps pay for everything else that isn't everything. Revenue. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yep. And, and then literally after we said that and we started playing it again, Portnoy literally just said exactly what we said. Like it's not rocket. It doesn't take rocket appliances to figure it out. Like the, right. the people that generate the most revenue, they freaking you know, allow for experimentation and allow for developmental stuff so that they can stay alive and stay around because they're talented. They're just not there yet. Like they're yep. on their way, hopefully. And well, that, yeah, exactly. And it's so selfish of them to not come in because, you know, that 500 grand that they have, you know, lost and not made, not written that law. Yeah, lost, but they, that they haven't made is what's, you know, paying for, you know, freaking intern Jimmy to be here, you know, mm-hmm. and like, you know, then, you know, Portnoy is like, well, fuck, you guys aren't coming in. I can't hire, you know, this crop of interns because I've lost $500,000, you know, it's, you know, affecting more people, most likely than, you know, just those two who are, you know, doing whatever. Exactly. And there's nothing wrong with being selfish. If they wanted to be selfish and they weren't willing to renegotiate their 70 grand a year and they're bringing in hundreds of thousands of dollars for one freaking right. Just in advertising, forget 
all the other stuff and the merch yes. and all that stuff that's super popular, if they were still getting paid 70 grand a year, like, no, we're not going to renegotiate that. Oh, we'll take care of you, but they keep putting it off. But that's yeah. what Portnoy said. And like we said, you right. know, you're telling the truth, um, that <laughs> wasn't the case. Like they were very well yeah. compensated and taken care of and rightfully so. And that's great. And that's the way that, that, that it should be. So their selfishness is in no way warranted whatsoever. Right. Exactly. Well, I think that's a wrap, man. This has been a good yep. This was fun. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. I think we're going to tie. I think I'm going to title this the boys react to call, uh, call her daddy, whatever, or whatever this podcast name was. And then it's, we're just going to do it like that. Or just rip call of duty or call a call her daddy. <laughs> oh, that's late, man. You're, it's like morning for you. I'm yeah, it's fucking one yeah. fifteen in the morning right now. This is great. Thanks for watching everyone. Yeah to our other podcasts and stuff. Bye-bye.